Namaste. So while we are going through what we are going through, there are aspects which we don't touch upon. It belongs to a domain of knowledge which we have lost. We have entered into a groove, not today, but over the last 100, 200 years, which has led us to an extremely materialistic view of life. By materialistic, I don't mean earning money and all. That is not even materialistic. That is asuric view of life, <laughs> where people live only for money and such things. But by materialistic, I mean where we regard matter as the sole reality, or at least as the most important reality which governs our existence here. Now, matter has its place and matter is the basis, uh, physical basis. But uh, if we take it as the primary and the ultimate, then there is a problem because we miss out on other aspects and dimensions of reality which are at least as important, if not more important. Now, uh, there is a dimension which uh, we completely miss out and that material science cannot tell us about and that is what happens after death. So, I, I was deeply moved a few days back when I came to know what happens to patients who die of the corona in a hospital setting. Now, first of all, it's very strange. If you die in a hospital setting with a confirmed corona, it's different from if you die without being labeled as corona. It's different if you die at home without getting the corona testing. Meaning thereby this whole idea of hyper-controlling things is actually a facade. Now, what happens when a person dies of corona in a hospital setting? I hope many of you are aware. And uh, I had heard about it last year. Then I thought that they have changed it all. But it seems the rule is still the same. And the rule is that there is no daha sanskar. So, I mean, they probably have whatever rituals they may be doing. But it seems that relatives don't go. So, the body is taken right from the hospital to the their own special crematorium where they have gas or high pressure gas or things like that in which the body is placed and it goes away. So this is based on this understanding that body is what, what do we call it? Lash. It's a dead thing. This is a gross misunderstanding. In a certain sense, there is nothing which is dead. There is always life involved in it. But more specific, when we come to human body, there is an interface between the clinical death, cellular death and the death as one can understand it spiritually. Clinical death is when the heartbeat and breathing stops. Now it has been known that within a certain period of time it can be revived and some patients or some people who have gone, they come back. So that means that there is no hard and fixed rule that if this stops, you are done forever. There is a period of time in which the soul or if one doesn't believe in soul, the life energy can get back. and One can start living and people have survived and they have spoken about it. Then apart from clinical death, there is something that which is biological death, there is something called a cellular death. There is still life going on in the cells. And this takes a much longer time, hours, six hours, eight hours when the life energy is oozing out slowly. And then there is a third dimension, which of course is known to occultists. The Egyptians knew it and that's how they could preserve the mummies. And that was called as the spirit of the form. Even the form has its own spirit and it takes time for the spirit of form to disengage from the human body. So what is its relevance and significance to all these daha sanskar rituals, these, you know, cremation rituals. Now, they were not rituals. As modern psychology, if you read it, they say, oh, it gives some satisfaction to the human being because it doesn't understand anything about these occult processes. These rituals were not just rituals. They were meant to do something, have an action upon what happens after death. So what happens after death, the different aspects of a being, the vital, mental, they are getting disengaged. Because the central thing which holds them, the soul, that is gone. Because it leaves, all others say, Ki, okay, now time up, so let us start leaving. And when it leaves, initially, the vital sheath, the mental sheath, slowly there is a disintegration process. In each of the worlds, they go and dissolve. And the soul goes back to its own world and comes back after its uh, 
you know, reconstitution is over. But we are not going to talk about that. But what happens immediately after that? So a human being, if you look at it, is like a bag which contains many things. What does this bag contain? All that we have put into it. Desires, fears, hopes, hate, love, jealousies, everything that it contains. Is greed, all this is put inside this bag. Of course, goodness, all this. So when the bag is burst, bodily death, then it disintegrates and goes into the atmosphere and it becomes what is called as, in Indian uh, thought is called as Bhut. Bhut has nothing to do with all that picture stuff. Huh? Bhutadi, it is literally Bhut is elemental energies. These elemental energies which are like bits and fragments inside us held together by a central will, now they suddenly disintegrate and enter the atmosphere. So what happens? They create a heaviness in the atmosphere. And because uh, Indians knew about it, having had a very developed occult sense, they would burn the body. Because the simple act of burning would disintegrate. You see, fire and water are wonderful ways to cleanse away many of these forces. But in addition, there were rituals like mantras and this thing. Because the person, the being who is, was attached to the body... It's not like now it was uh, alive, now it is dead. There is a period of transition in which it is still connected with the bodily life and emotionally with those who are around. There is a period of transition. It is for this that the shrad and all these ceremonies. Of course, for a developed being, these are not required. But for an average human being, the vital sheath experiences pain and pleasure, grief and happiness, just like it experiences here, but in a much more worse way. Or a cute way, because now it's only the vital sheath. It immediately feels the impact of people crying or people... Uh, so when it comes out of the body, after death, especially in violent death, it can be very disorienting. But it, it is quite... You know, it is looking for life. It's, you have thrown away somebody from the house. So what does the person do? It looks for some house to stay. It looks for somewhere it can get Sharan. But now it is not one being, but disintegrated stuff. So it starts entering into the whole atmosphere and creates a kind of cloud. What is that cloud consisting of? Let us say in a case of person dying with illness, all the fears, all that, you know, even that material, the virus, whether it lives or not, is not the issue. We can talk about that. But the issue is that the force which was behind it the ill will, the suggestions, all this is fear. They are into the atmosphere now. Where do they go? They are gone from the body. So they start hanging in the atmosphere. And what do they do? They need life, energy. They start what is called as latching on to other human beings and drawing life from there. That's how the contagion and the infection spreads. So when you... When people just dispose of the dead, the word is disposal, which is a very strange word, you know. It's like somebody half jokingly. I remember with Dr. Maheshwari once, someone said, um, I think it was myself or probably somebody well known to me on the scooter, shall I drop you here? He said, no, no, don't drop me. <laughs> Leave me here. <laughs> so disposal of the dead. Means it's dead. So you have to dispose of. You understand the logic? But what happens to the person? He is dead in the physical, but he is still conscious in other domains. So imagine somebody has lived in a family setting for many years. Parent, grandparent. And when the person is going, what is the person experiencing? All those whom it cared for are suddenly vanished before the person. He would look for them, probably try to search out. And in the process, death will not be a smooth transition. It will be a very painful transition because they will move around searching for it. And in the bargain, because we have not done a proper disposal, not really made the person go in a nice send-off, we look for homes, not that person, but the vital sheath which is in the atmosphere. And the contagion will spread in a much more vicious way. So this idea that by doing it, we are actually preventing the spread may be very badly misinformed. 
the miasm which is spreading in the atmosphere like a cloud may be the one going and reaching out and trying to you know the word used is vampirize people now the whole thing is is there a science behind it physical science the science is that viruses can survive after the body is dead in the sense they need a living cell to survive but they can continue to live there are two kinds of viruses one which have a protein coat and the other which have a lipid coat lipid coat one which is this our uh, covid virus can easily be dissolved by simply washing because they are lipids so even a soap water washing is enough to dissolve them the protein coat viruses are very difficult to dissolve it don't go easily but this is a lipid coat virus so actually there is no reason if you really cleanse the body well of course there are people who are doing it with mask and all these ppe kit if they want if people are so scared so to do it properly if you give a proper wash if you give a proper uh, at the most you can apply some disinfectant sanitizer there is no reason why there cannot be a proper burial or a uh, you know fire ceremony to those who are going away so when i looked for evidence there is not a single study done on this virus so whatever is there is based on past assumptions it's a reasonable belief that it may be infective worst case scenario it will be nice if people can some relatives could be in ppe kit like someone is there to you know send off the person so there could be somebody from the family who could be in the ppe kit and let the person go through a proper process this is a very uh, one of the unfortunate thing and i think this is one part of it occult but look at it what it is doing it is slowly dehumanizing do you realize that there is an aspect of you know when people often ask oh the person is dead why do we do pranam to the person isn't it there is a to mar gaya hai mar mare ko kya pranam karna you know pranam is not done to a dead body but to a vehicle which has served the dehi inside there is mothers car no we do pranam chariots chariot of jagannath because it's a vehicle vehicle has its own importance a vehicle which has helped in the transition it contains imprints and those imprints the soul has to draw it must be given that time otherwise a life times imprints are wasted because it's a very confusing moment rush to the crematorium 2 hours 4 hours 6 hours and burn the body the soul needs actually it needs 24 hours to withdraw all the experiences which it has had then only it will go that is the moment when it is slowly withdrawing everything that has gone into the even the cells it is withdrawing from there so when we treat like this that oh just lash hai infected body let's rush burn give it to gas nobody no relatives nobody it's a very um, cruel and inhuman way of sending off and if we continue along these lines already there is a dehumanization taking place through all this everybody is scared of everybody else is it don't come near don't go don't meet a person you know there no friendship is not important you are afraid of the virus everywhere it is creating such distances between heart to heart now people often say but it is doing good how because you get time to go within how many people go within when they don't have a work to do and those who have to go within don't need a virus to go within people who take up yoga they take up yoga they can be in the midst of battlefield they will go within because that's their turn of mind that's what they are born for you can't forcibly put people in a prison and say go within one person will go within but the rest will become dehumanized because such is the atmosphere of that place so we should be very careful i am very surprised that in india when we do it because who is recommended all this who who is sitting in who somebody who is uh, as insensitive as you know body is a body and rest is all belief system so it's a very unfortunate thing nobody has looked into this direction and perhaps it is adding to the size of the problem so i just want to read something <coughs> from mother's writings just a few lines i was speaking the other day about the hospital atmospheres because people start asking me how come you are seeing so i go go back to the master <laughs> so the mother says but the minute you step into the hospitals you are ill that's right 
it's as i say it's the medical atmosphere and if they don't immediately find what's wrong with you it's because you have the knack of hiding it but oh how many little experiences i have had about this and so interesting something is wrong here or there in the body a small thing as long as you don't pay attention to it she says the cells start liking when you say you know what you are getting who am i suddenly you get a lot of attention sick person getting attention so she says as long above all you don't mention it to anyone and you give it up to the lord if it happens to hurt you give it up to the lord it's all right it's fine you aren't sick it's a disorder somewhere if you are unfortunate enough to utter a word about it to anyone mother is mentioning she is knowing super science not just about science and besides she was very well aware of all the things even from the medical standpoint and she is saying it from the yogic vision so if you are unfortunate to utter a word about it to anyone and especially to the doctor and especially to the doctor whoever he is it instantly becomes an illness like a mantra now it is goes around like a mantra you had an ordinary sneeze and suddenly it becomes there is a label now that mantra starts playing i have this i have this i have this so then what happens he says it instantly becomes an illness and i know why it's because the cells that are in disorder feel all of a sudden they are very important and very interesting persons so then as they are very interesting they must make themselves still more interesting if they have a movement that isn't harmonious they exaggerate it it becomes even less harmonious in order to assert itself more the principle is if you have a difficulty don't keep speaking about it and ruminating over it in fact the less you think about it the better you are likely to find the true solution so mentioning to people anyways what will they do they will either sympathize you in on the face and behind say acha i am safe isn't it or they will feel jealous how come you are okay if you have or acha you are you have only this much difficulty i have so much how come you are so lucky all these things so there is no need to mention just tell it to the lord to take it and that's it it sounds like a joke but it's true that's how it is i know it i have observed it carefully in my cells so when they are told who are told cells you fools that's not your duty at all you are ridiculous don't try to become important by you know i have got this illness have you noticed that many times you wake up either with a little throat in the here and that if you ignore it 99% by that if you just ignore it you'll see it vanishes the moment you say i think i have something i should go and see the doctor no? by afternoon something more is developing is it developing into a serious problem then by evening you start having body ache and then by next day probably you know you are waiting maybe it will pass away the whole night is in waiting 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 next day you wake up with a fever and then you say i don't know what's going to happen better i see the doctor and you go to a doctor and he labels you you have this and that's how the whole process goes as a drama it's wonderful so the moment notices it or you show it to the doctor as soon as somebody notices it or you show it to the doctor oh especially when you show it to the doctor it becomes an illness it swells up and swells up oh i am an important person i am receiving attention have you noticed that uh, with uh, hospitals multiplying diseases have multiplied i mean if you really see it is a simple observation you can make you see they must immediately be told no 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 you are taking the wrong road you are making yourself much more ridiculous be quiet the doctor crystallizes the illness makes it concrete hard afterwards he takes credit for curing it when he can <laughs> so this is the one part but the second part also which i was speaking about 
When they are in too much of a hurry to burn them, sometimes they burn them alive. Whom do we burn alive? The dead. They must wait. For there is a consciousness of the form, a life of the form. There is a consciousness in the form assumed by the cells. So sometimes the body makes abrupt movements when burned. People say it's mechanical. It's not mechanical. And then she speaks about her own experience when three times, you know, she had died. I mean, what is called as dead. And then she came, came, comes back. I think they do it here in India. They burn it apart from entirely sanitary conditions. Here in India, mainly because they are very afraid of all these little entities that come from desires, impulses, things which are dispersed in the air and which make ghosts and all kinds of things. All desires, all attachments, all those things are like pieces that break off. Each one goes its own way, you see. Where are they going? Food. So there is nothing like you are born back from human birth to an animal birth, no. But supposing there is a lot of greed. So if there is a goat nearby, this little part goes into the goat. You know, goats are all the time munching or in a rabbit. Or if it is very attached to money, as they say, snake. Now it is not the person who goes, but these little entities which go. And they start using these animals because that's they are like animal things inside us. All those things are like pieces that break off. Then these pieces gain strength in the surrounding atmosphere and when they can fasten on to someone, they vampirize him. Then they keep on trying to satisfy their desires. The world, the terrestrial atmosphere is full of filth. We don't see it, we look at it only as, you know, from the surface. And then she says, I think that many of these entities are dispersed by fire that creates Havoc. So when you light up a fire, it has the power to disperse these entities. You know, that's why ancient times used to do havan. So apart from the, of course, the true yajna inside, havan is not for inner this thing. But havan clears the atmosphere. And especially things like Kapoor. Kapoor has that power to, you know, uh, like this whole science based on smells, music, it tends to disperse these entities. Shankadhwani, somebody was saying the other day, quite likely. This is a, a way of understanding this world that maybe it actually finishes, disintegrates those things. At least we know that there used to be conches which would inspire soldiers to fight. Its other side is that it would take away fear from them. You are going to fight. So the moment you blow the conch, the fear goes away. And you are ready that, you know, we are going to... Even music, when you are, uh, you know... Um, um, going to a war. So each um, battalion has a war cry. The other day, I think Assam Regiment war cry was on the net. So what was it? Tagda raho, tagda raho. Like that. So different. So Jai Bhavani. Uh, so these are war cries. What do they do? They drive away fear completely. Because of one, the sound. Second, because of the association. Long time in our consciousness, Bhavani is the Divine Mother. So when we do these rituals, when we do these mantras, when we do these, it's not just a mechanical send of this dead body, you know, it's better we do a ritual and be done with it. It has a deep meaning which we have lost and are losing fast because we are so much obsessed now with this whole idea of a virus with one person mortality. It's one of these saddest tales when we look back after years, then we will understand what damage the virus did and how much more damage we did because of our ignorance or a superficial view of things. Namaste.